Hi, it's Thursday, and it's time again for Bible study, amen? And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the Word of God, amen? And today, we are still studying faith, amen? Because we've been in it for a couple weeks now, and we're still working on faith. Last week, we talked about level up, and this week, we're going to talk about fulfilling faith, fulfilling faith. And we're going to come out of Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 9 to 22, and chapter 7, verse 1 to 24. And as usual, we're studying from the New Living Translation, amen? And we just wanted to make sure that we all are in sync with faith. And I thank you so much for just being along, coming along with me on this journey. And I tell you something, my husband has uh, proven, uh, helped me actually to, to know what level my faith is because he was just recently in the hospital. And I thank God that he was so faithful and he brought him out. Amen. So we're starting from Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. And as usual, we study from the New Living Translation. Please, please, please share this with your friends and family so everyone can see and stay up to date with us. Amen. We don't want anyone to miss out. So we start with the verse 9 of Genesis chapter 6. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. So when God looked down, he saw nothing but corruption. Sounds familiar, right? And he decided to destroy the entire earth and wipe everybody out besides Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. Let's look at verse 14. So this is God now talking to Noah. Build a large boat from, Cy from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar, inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. God is into the details, brothers and sisters. Leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look, I am about, look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood. I'm going to read it again. This is verse 17. Look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal, and every kind of, of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. So God is going to send a few of the animals to Noah to be kept alive. Amen. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and all of the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as God has commanded him. And that shows obedience. So part of fulfilling faith is showing obedience, recognizing that God is in control, 
recognizing that God is into the details. He's very structured, he's very detail oriented, and he doesn't just go willy nilly with what he wants us to do. God is specific. He gives specific instructions and he expects us to carry them out. Uh, so now we move into Genesis chapter seven, verse one says, when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family for among all the earth. Let me start over. Chapter seven, verse one says, when everything was ready, I want us to recognize that. When everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family for among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. I want you to catch that. So don't think that anything you do is hidden from God. People of God, I want you to recognize you can fool some of the people some of the time, most of the people most of the time, but you cannot fool God none of the time. So God could see from heaven that only Noah was righteous. So verse two says, take with you seven pairs, male and female of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice and take one pair of each of the others. Also take seven pairs of every kind of bird. There must be a male and a female in each pair to ensure that all life will survive on the earth. After the flood, seven days from now, I will make the rains pour down on the earth and it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights until I have wiped from the earth all the living things I have created. So God was so through with mankind that he was willing to wipe away every living thing he has created except for the, the animals in the ark with Noah and Noah and his family. That should let you feel a chills going up and down your spine because, you know, God's getting to that point right now with all of this foolishness that we've been doing. So verse five says, so Noah did everything as the Lord commanded him. Again, showing obedience, which shows that he is fulfilling his faith. Noah, uh, so now we're moving on to verse 6. Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. He went on board the boat to escape the flood. He and his wife and his sons and their wives with them were all the various kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice, and those that were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. They entered the boats in pairs, male and female, just as God had commanded Noah. After seven days, the waters of the flood came and covered the earth. Whoa. Verse 11. When Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth and the flood fell in mighty torrents from the sky. The rain continued to fall for 40 days and 40 nights. Verse 13. That very day Noah had gone into the boat with his wife and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. With them in the boat were peers of every kind of animals, Dark, domestic and wild, large and small, along with birds of every kind. Two by two, they came into the boat, representing every living thing that breathes, a male and a female of each kind, just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. Children of God, when daddy closes the door, no one's getting in and no one's getting out. Amen. So we want to be on the right side of the door the next time when he comes back, when he's condemning the world and he's shutting people out. You want to make sure that you are on the right side of that door when he gets shut. Amen. So do your own self-examination and make sure you're on the right side of that door. Verse 17 says, for, for 40 days, the flood waters grew deeper 
covering the ground and lifting the bow higher above the earth. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the flood, the boat floated safe, safely on the surface. I'm going to read that verse 18 again. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the boat floated safely on the surface. Finally, the water covered even the highest mountains on the earth, rising more than 22 feet above the highest peak. All the living things on earth died. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people, saints of God, all the people, everything that breathed and lived on dry land died. God wiped out every living thing on the earth, people, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and the birds of the sky all were destroyed. The only people who survived was Noah and those with him in the boat. Are you on the right side of that door, saints of God? Listen, stop playing church. Get right and do it now. Amen. And verse 24 says, the flood waters covered the earth for 150 days. Verse 8 says, But God remembered Noah. Oh, glory be to God. Put your name in that slot. Say, But God remembered what your name is. Because there are times when you think you are in this thing by yourself, that God has forgotten you and that God doesn't know what you're going through and all this is happening and where is God? And we can go on and on and on with the questions. But verse 8 says, But God remembered Noah and all the wild, wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the flood waters began to recede. The underground waters stopped flowing and the torrential rains from the sky were stopped. So the flood waters gradually receded from the earth after 150 days, exactly five months from the time the flood began, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, other mountain peaks became visible. Ooh, Jesus. Verse 6. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood waters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see if the water had receded and it could find dry ground. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the, boat, the dove back inside. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Ooh, God. Then Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. He waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. So the dove found some place to land, found some seeds to eat on, places to fly around, to stretch his legs, and no longer cooped up in the ark. And he said, Sayonara! See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. He was out, amen. Noah was now 601 years old on the first day of the new year, 10 and a half months after the flood began. The flood waters had, had almost dried up from the earth. Noah lifted back the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was drying. Two more months went by, and at last, the earth was dry children of god children of god sometimes it looks like we're going through some stuff and it looks like it's never going to be over but have heart hold on to god's unchanging hand hold on the flood water is drying up trust me you're going to be on dry land just like the children of israel when they crossed over on dry land amen i don't know what that was for but hold on to that word your change is coming 
It is going to happen. Just have faith and trust God. 15 says, then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife and your sons and your, and their wives release all the animals, the birds, the livestock, and the small animals that scurry on the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. So Noah, his wife and his sons and their wives left the boat and all of the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat pair by pair. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and there he sacrificed his bird offerings, the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race. Even though everything they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood, I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Woo! So he Hebrews 11, 7 says, by faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Is your righteousness coming by faith? Are you obedient to what God told you to do? Are you doing and saying and going where you need to be for Jesus and for the glory of God. I want you to do your self-examination. Mark eleven twenty two says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. Mark nine twenty three says, What do you mean? If I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Children of God, are you believing today? Are you believing God today? Are you allowing him to lead? Are you trusting in him? Are you allowing him to stretch you and to grow your faith and to increase your faith? We only have one more class to do on faith and then we're going to change this topic and go into a different series. But I want you to really think about what it is you have done over the years. Can God trust you with a task? Is he still trusting you with a task that he gave you a year ago or two years ago or even one month ago are you being obedient like we see Noah was to to build an ark for rain something that the world has never seen before and to trust that this event is going to happen where are you in your faith walk do your self-examination it's never ever about me or, or anybody else don't let anybody else's opinion change what God has said God's is the only opinion that matters and when, when push comes to shove, as my mother always liked to say, you want to be on the right side of that push. Amen. Matthew seven twenty says, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will come. It will move. Nothing would be impossible. And lastly, Psalms 46, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Children of God, are you honoring your faith? Are you doing what you need to do? You know, I can, like they say, you can bring the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So you need to check on your own faith level. Do you need to increase your faith? Do you need to fulfill your faith? Were you given instructions and you have not done what thus saith the Lord? Are you waiting on God? God's waiting on you because he already talked about it. Like any parent, I said it, I meant it. Now he's through with it. What, what are you doing with what he told you to do? So with that, fulfilling faith, we're going to move on to our scripture today our list i should say of those that we're praying for lily ayana emmett starlet giovanni shackleford family corey jordan cassandra georgette norma anthony julian and family 
Elijah, Echo, Don Cosby, Lee McGee, Maria Rice, Patrick Linton, Deacon Isabel Roberts. We have two James, Lorraine Rogers, Grace Appleby, Michael Moore, Mario French, and Mario French, Pastor T, Leonie Walker, Tracy Cisco, Lee Mullins, Marlene Franklin, Donald, Jean, Goldsby, Wright Family, Karen and Charles, Elvis, CJ Nash, um, Francisco. We are praying for Linda McCall, Lucinda Downer, Paulette Redwood, Doral Anderson, in the Grant Grand Family, Israel, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, we're also praying for, of course, your Russia and the United States of America. We're praying for Madeline Turner, Andre, Victoria, Jesse, Marie, and family, Maxine, Brinkley, Tracy, Brinkley, Lucetta Hall, Robin Hall. Ed Hogan, Yvonne, Denise, Malcolm Bell. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come, Lord God, on behalf of your children. We give you the praise you so rightly deserve, and we thank you ahead of time for what you're about to do. Lord, we just thank you for the healing powers that you have. We thank you, God, for, because you're still in the miracle working business. Father God, my husband went into the hospital in a stretcher and came out walking talking and in his sound mind i thank you lord god because you are such a good god i pray over everyone lord god under the sound of my voice that they will also hear from you that they will also be obedient to you when you give them their instructions that they will have a fulfilling faith that they will walk out their faith and be just like noah god we just thank you for the examples that you have given us in the word Bless, Lord God, all, everyone that I've mentioned, every country that I've mentioned, and Father God, every situation that you need to intervene in. Holy Spirit, I ask now that you will intercede, intervene, Lord God, make the impossible possible, bring things from the spiritual to the physical, let people know that you're all about blessing and securing your people. We thank you ahead of time for what you're about to do. And it's in Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. God bless you, children of God. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.